In our previous series of videos, we talked about how to create an XSD document, which defines the rules for an XML document, and then we created an XML document that fulfills those rules. In this video, we're going to go a step further. We're going to take a look at how to upload and validate an XML document against an XSD in C Sharp and Visual Studio. Now, there are several steps. And so we might go over several videos to cover this. We might not get it all in this video. But first of all, we need to create a web form in C Sharp and Visual Studio. Then we need to go to the toolbox and find the components that we need or the widgets that we need to upload an XML file. We will discover page load. And then we're going to take a look at some .NET classes that we're going to use for this purpose. So XML Reader, XML Reader Settings, and Validation Event Handler. So without further ado, let's get started. Now just a little proof of concept. This is what our finished product will look like. First, we'll choose a file, for example, our plants XML, and then we will click on a read button, and we should get some feedback that validation passed. Now, that's because we currently have a validating file, but what if we add something that causes the validation to fail? And I'll just do a quick check here in Notepad++, and we'll confirm that, sure enough, foo is not permitted in this document. So we go back, and let's repeat this process with our updated document now, and read XML. And sure enough, this time we get error validating a message the element plant has an invalid child element foo. So this is our end goal. Our screen won't be, it's going to have a few less widgets than you see on here. This is just a little experimental screen that I've been working with. But nonetheless, we'll have at least these two components. So I go into Visual Studio, and I'm going to go to Solution Explorer. And up on my service, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to choose Add. And then we will say New Item. And we will choose, just a moment, we'll choose Web and web form will be fine. We're looking some, for something with the ASPX extension. So let's call this XML upload. Dot ASPX, and then I'm going to choose add. And the first thing that you see, uh, let's navigate down just one moment, XML upload, ASPX. Okay, the first thing that you'll see is an HTML-like form. Uh, looks very similar to things that we've seen before. Uh, a couple of interesting tags though, Run at server simply means that there is some kind of magic that's going to happen on the server to, to perform some computations based on what we add to the screen, which we're about to do in just a moment. Uh, page language, C sharp. So this is a this is what's called a directive, this line number one. This tells uh, Visual Studio, .NET, IIS, tells it how to interpret this page. And here we're saying that we're using the C sharp language and what's called a code behind. So a code behind means that we have a program file, something that compiles, which supports this HTML look and feel that we have, that we're looking at right now. Now I'm going to run over to design view, and we'll see that there's kind of an outline that indicates that there's a body right here. And I'm going to go to toolbox, and we see here quite a few user interface elements that we can snap onto this page. Now this page will be rendered in a browser, so these will all eventually convert to HTML, but they also have a nice programming interface behind the covers that we're going to get to use to make this page do what we want. So first of all, let's grab the file upload, and we'll grab it right here, and let's put a bit, you see it's a nice drag and drop style environment, so I can uh, just kind of navigate around and I can put some text in like uh, 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 upload an XML file, and then we'll have that right over our browse, and then we'll say we'll have a, a validate button. So I'll go back to toolbox, and I will look for a button. There we go. Drag and drop the button on. Uh, let's rename this. So text, we're going to call it validate. Okay, and then right click, and uh, let's see what else do we want to do. I'll tell you what, before we do anything else, let me change the name of the button from button one to BTN validate. I always like to change the name of anything that I might program against later because BT and validate makes a lot more sense to me than just button one. Okay, uh, same thing with this guy, file upload one. Let's call that XML file upload, something like that so that we remember what it is. Okay, now validate. Let's go ahead and double click on validate and 
what we'll find out is that it creates a method for us. So a method is kind of like a verb, a unit of work. And in this case, we're saying that this unit of work will happen when we click on that validate button. So we can do something here. I'll tell you what, let's just do a proof of concept first. Uh, I am going to go back to my toolbox. I am going to grab a label and this will be our status. So I, maybe I'll even grab two labels. So one that just says status. Okay, we'll say validation status. Okay, there we go. And then let's grab one more label and that will have our output text based on whatever happened in the validation. So text, I'll go ahead and uh, we'll change this to no, uh, no file uploaded so for now. And we know that we'll be able to change that later uh, when we do upload and validate a file. So I'll call this LBL status, something like so, and I'll save. Okay, so once again, double click on validate. Now let me say LBL status, and then we'll say dot text equals you clicked me. So what we're doing is we're changing, oops, sorry, terminate that line with a semicolon. So what we're doing, remember that this little thing here is magic. That is what happens when we click on that validate button. And then what we're doing is we're taking that status label and we're changing the text to you clicked me. So nothing, no, no real heavy lifting just yet, but we do have enough that we can at least take a look at our model and make sure that it's working. So I click on the little play button and it fires up Google Chrome. Uh, by the way, this is a kind of handy note right here that uh, Google Chrome and Visual Studio are integrated. So you can debug TypeScript and JavaScript from Chrome to uh, uh, Visual Studio, but we'll talk about that a different day. I just, I did find that pretty interesting. So upload an XML file. If I click this, a little file upload box appears. Nothing is going to happen just yet uh, because I haven't wired this up on the other end, but we see that sure enough, this does open our file upload. And then remember, nothing happens yet on validate, except it should change the text that we see right here where it says no file uploaded. So watch that carefully. And I'm going to click on validate. And sure enough, we see you clicked me. So from here, it's not going to be a whole lot of work to connect the dots to say, okay, upload a file and then have the XSD and then validate the file. So we'll start with that file upload, but first I do want to show you a few things. You noticed how this page changed when I clicked the button. And to do that, it had to do a post back, which means that it had to go call something on the server and then the server responds with the new information. Uh, so post back, we will, we will see that term in just a few moments. One other thing I want to show is control U. Notice that under the covers, this is all just plain old HTML, a little bit of extra magic here called view state, but otherwise this is just a plain old HTML document that's getting rendered in our browser and we're creating it in Visual Studio. Okay, so I click stop debugging and let's handle this uploaded file. I'm going to go to the code behind. We have to be very careful on this because there are a couple of different pages. We have the XML upload, ASPX, the one that we see right here. Now, if I click under the covers, you see there's XML upload ASPX.cs. So this is the code behind. This is where we can write any code that we want this page to handle. And as a matter of fact, you see our button validate click is already there. Now, if we look, we see that there's a page load option. And that means what do we do when the page loads? Well, one of the first things that we want to do is find out if, if we are here loading the page because we're posting back. Remember that term post back I said just a moment ago. Uh, I said that when we click something on our page in the browser, many times, not all the time, but many times it requires a call to a server. And that call to the server is a post back. So when the page initially loads, we're not going to have a file uploaded. But when we click the validate button, there's a good chance we will have a file uploaded. So first of all, let's put in an if test. I'm gonna say if is post back. And that just means, are we hearing back from the page after it rendered the first time? So I'll put some comments to this effect. Are we hearing back from the page after, whoops, after the first render? Okay, now within is post back, I'm going to first of all, check for a valid file. 
So we'll say boolean uh, valid file equals false. Let's assume false. Let's assume guilty until presumed innocent. Okay. Now we're going to say uh, we're going to have a path where we will store the uploaded file. Okay. And I'm going to say server dot map path. And I'm going to say uh, the the uh, parentheses double quote and then tilde slash XML slash and then close double quote. That's just kind of magic in Windows and in the .NET environment where tilde slash means kind of a relative environment. So it indicates that from our project, we're looking at this XML file right here. Okay, that's good. Now, what extensions will we allow the user to upload? We might want to give a predefined set of extensions to make sure that the user is not uploading anything inappropriate. So we'll say string uh, the, and then the square brackets to indicate an array and then allowed extensions equals and then we'll say uh, curly double quote dot XML close double quote. And that's simply going to be our validation. Okay, next we're going to say, uh, okay, find the extension of the file that the user is attempting to upload. And for this one, we'll say uh, system.io.path.get extension, a little utility file to help us find an extension that we're uh, uh, of a file. So what was the name of our file uploader? I think it was called XML file upload. So XML file upload dot file name, okay, dot to lower. Okay, so what this is doing is it's looking at that file upload component. It's looking at the file name that the user is trying to upload. It's getting the extension and it's lower casing it. So we can save this to a string file extension, just like so, variable. And once we've saved it, after I spell it properly, then we can compare what was uploaded to what is permitted. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to say if file extension uh, equal equal allowed extensions, and now I'm going to say zero. Why is that? Well, allowed extension can actually be a collection of multiple extensions. In our case, I've specified only one, so I'm just picking the first element out of the array called allowed extensions, that's all. So if file extension equals allowed extension, uh, then we have a valid file. We have a valid file. And I'll simply say valid file equals true. Okay, now we'll say if valid file. And you know, there are actually several ways we can do this. Let me, let me, uh, let me uh, cut out the middleman here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my mind and consolidate this a bit. I'm going to say else. We'll go ahead and do the else part, which means the file is not valid. In other words, the file extension is not in our list of allowed extensions. In that case, I'm going to take our LBL status and I'm going to set text as we saw earlier. And I'm going to say file extension. And then we'll do a little plus to concatenate together. File extension plus is not allowed. Okay, and term terminate with a semicolon. So we take care of the invalid file part. Now, uh, what we want to do is we want to save the uploaded file. And I do want to stress, I say valid file, that just means the extension is valid. We have not parsed the XML yet. We have not done a validity check on that. So uh, we're only saying the extension is, is valid. So let's say, uh, our XML file upload posted file, which means what file did the user upload? And then we'll say save as an easy way to simply say, okay, take the, the file that the user has uh, uploaded and save it to this location. Okay. We will need a path. So in other words, a directory, and we are also going to need a file name. Now, we grabbed a path up above, but we did not save that to a variable. Let's go ahead and handle that right now. We'll say string path equals server dot path. 
Okay, so now we have this path saved and a variable called path. So uh, now we can say save the file the user uploaded in that path. And then let's also say uh, we want to use the same file name that the user used. So we'll say XML file upload. And then we'll say dot and file name and that will get us the file name of the file that was uploaded. Okay, next we'll take LBL status dot text and we'll say upload successful. Okay, indicate that things went well. Okay, uh, finally, let's save, uh-oh, uh, it looks like I used the wrong character there, so we'll make that an equals. Finally, let's say uh, file name equals path plus, actually, we'll just copy straight from here. So we'll save this entire full file path because we might need it later. So file name equals path plus XML upload file name. Up above, I will declare a string file name. There we go. Uh, again, just so we can use that later if needed. Let me uppercase the in there for consistency sake. And I think we're in fairly good shape. shape. Now, uh, one thing about .NET, .NET generally does not do something we have in Java called checked exceptions. As a Java programmer by trade, I always like to do checked exceptions. A checked exception means something went wrong externally. I need to figure out what to do in that scenario because it's something external I cannot affect. So I'll say try and open curly. And down here we'll say catch. Okay. And the idea is we only get to this catch block and we'll say exception ex if something went wrong. But gosh, if something went wrong, don't we don't we want to know that? And don't we want to tell the user that? So we don't want to have the user assume that things went right if things did not go right, which is why I like to do a try catch like this. So here we'll say file cannot be uploaded message. Uh, this is a no-no, by the way, ex.get message or ex.message. This is something we generally do not recommend. You see, we're taking an exception and we're showing it to the user. Not a good idea for, pro for production code. And why is that? Well, it's not a good idea because we're, tell we're giving the user some ammunition. We're giving the user information about our environment, which we generally don't like to do. Also, we're confusing the user. What if your mom and dad got the message that said, you know, IO exception, and it didn't make any sense to them? So uh, I'm doing it now because, you know, we're kind of in a prototype debug mode, so we'll let ourselves do it. And at this point, we will go ahead and let the, uh, let the browser render our page, and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so it didn't take too long. So choose file, and I'll say plans.xml, and then we have to click validate to get that post back. So validate, well, it looks like the post back overwrote our message, so I'm going to need to take that out. Uh, but uh, just one moment, we'll take care of that. Okay, remove that logic from validate. Let's try one more time. I try plans.xsd, or xml rather, open, validate, and upload successful. Now let's try a different extension. Let's try plants HTML and validate. File extension .html is not allowed. So we see sure enough our logic did work as we wish. Uh, if I stop and if I go back to Solution Explorer, I'll take a look at this XML and I will refresh this directory. And sure enough, we see that plants.xml did upload as we hoped. Uh, and here it is in our page. So that will get us started off, and the next video we will take a look at how to actually do the validation. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.